Happy Saturday, everybody. Everybody on TikTok keeps asking me what happened at Tel Aviv Airport, uh, why I was detained, what did they ask me, and what was the outcome. So let's get straight to it. Okay, so firstly, when I arrived in Tel Aviv, I met a gentleman coming off the plane. I asked him, how easy is it to get a train to, to the centre? He says, no problem, brother. I'm going to the centre. You can come with me. So we both walked up to border security. He handed over his passport. And that was it, it was done. He stood aside, waited on me. I handed my passport over and he looked at it and he looked at me and then he spoke to the other guy and he said something to him and the guy turned around to me and said, brother, you're going to have a problem. And at that point I thought, here we go. So he says, take a seat and I'll be with you in a while. Please be patient. So I sat there for one hour and then someone came over and come with me um, two people, so they led me through the airport to a quieter bit of the airport and he told me, take a seat, you're going to be going for an interview. So I asked him if I could have my passport and he said, no, I'll keep it just now. Which I thought, right, okay, fair enough. So I sat there for 10 minutes uh, and this big gentleman came out and asked me to go into the room and this is where it gets interesting. So when I entered the room, I took my bag off, we sat down, I didn't get searched, uh, they didn't go through my bag, nothing like that. So I sat down and the first few questions were very simple. What's your name? Where were you born? Why are you here? Do you know anybody here? My answers being, no, I don't know anybody here. I'm here for travel. I want to explore places. Where do you want to go? I says, I want to see as much as possible. Why have you not booked a return flight? I says, well, I don't know how easy it is to get about. So hopefully I'll be here for maybe one week. So the first few questions were, Pretty basic, why are you here? Where were you born? What's your parents' names? Where do your parents work? Just simple, simple questions at the start. But he then asked me, who am I meeting here? I says, nobody. He says, you, you must know someone here. I says, I don't know anybody here. Where do you plan to go here? I says, well, I've not booked a return flight. I'm looking to explore as much as possible. And I'll probably be here about one week. The next question I was a little curious about. They asked me, do you have any plans to visit Afghanistan and Iraq? I said, yes. And he looked at me and he went, really? I said, well, you're telling me to tell you the truth. Um, my thought behind that was perhaps they'd maybe seen me comment somewhere on social media that I planned to go there. And maybe they were just asking to see whether I was going to tell them the truth. So that was one of the first questions they asked me and I thought, hmm, maybe they've looked at my social media. So I said, yes, I do have plans to go there. And he just looked at me and went, hmm, really? And I said, yeah, well, you're telling me to tell you the truth. So that is the truth. He then said to me, do you know, I have to tell you something. You've been to almost every one of Israel's enemies. And I thought, right, Lebanon, Pakistan. He started rhyming them off. Lebanon, Pakistan, blah, blah, blah. And I said to him, he says, well, no, no offence, but they're your enemies. They're not my enemies. Which I don't think he took too, too kindly to, but it's just, it's the truth. So then we went through every one of my videos on YouTube and he had restocked to every bit. Um, who's this? What's this? So we started off with the Egypt videos. I went to Garbage City, uh, you'll see it on the, the YouTube videos if you, if you scroll down. Why did you go there? Who did you meet? Who do you know? And this went on for several videos. I was in Jordan recently and I went to the Palestinian refugee camp, Al Wadet. So I went through the video. Who's this person? What did he say? Why did you go there? And who's this person? Do you, know, do you still have their contact details? Asking lots and lots of questions. We practically went through that full video. At one part of the video, I, I go into a local Palestinian's home and he's talking about how they raise money for the Palestinian prisoners. And as this is playing, he's looking at me and I'm going, I, only, I was invited in there. I don't know who these people are. I'm just documenting my experience. That's all I could say. So we're going through the videos and it gets to Syria. I have to ask you, why, why why are you going to these places? Why are you going to Syria? I said, well, I've been told there's some very nice people there. 
a very nice place and it's somewhere that you see on the news. I wanted to check it out. I mean, let's be honest, no, no right-minded person goes to Syria. That's what he said. And I says, well, it's not against the rules. I can travel to Syria if I, if I want. Uh, they're not my enemy. So we go through all the Syria videos and he says, why did you, why did you name this video Crazy Border Crossing into Syria? I says, well, you've got to be a little bit imaginative when you're coming up with uh, thumbnails and titles for your YouTube videos. I says, watch the video and you'll see that I've not done anything wrong. So we go through the video, that was fine. We go on to the next one. Who did you meet in Syria? Uh, did anybody give you anything in Syria? Have you been back to Syria? Do you plan to go back to Syria? No, 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 no. Then we get to Pakistan. So he's going through the videos in Pakistan. Why did you go twice to Pakistan? He says. He says, well, the first time I took not well. I was unwell, and uh, Pakistan's a big country. So I wanted to go back and explore it more. He says, hmm, I just find it strange that you've been to Pakistan twice recently. Did someone ask you to take something back for them? I says, not at all. I just want to, I love Pakistan. And I said that to him. I says, the Pakistani people are the most friendly people that I've ever met. Uh, I have no hesitation. I'm not sure how how well received that comment was, but I says, I love Pakistan. I absolutely love it. Um, and I've got plans to go back again. So we're going through the Pakistan videos. And he says to me, and this is, this is, this is something that I found very strange. He says, are you a Muslim? I said, no, I'm not Muslim. He says, but I'm looking through your videos here and you go to a lot of mosques. You went to a mosque in Amman. You've been to several mosques in Pakistan. You went to a mosque in Syria. I find it very strange that you're going to all these mosques and you're not a Muslim. I said, well, some of the mosques are absolutely beautiful. I says, and most of the countries that I've visited so far are Muslim countries. And he just looked at me. And then he looked back at the computer. And he says, do you plan to become Muslim? Do you want to be a Muslim? I says, I says honestly, I says, hopefully after all my travels are finished, I'll have an answer to what religion that I want to follow. And he just looked at me. He says, can, can you speak Arabic? I says, no, I can't speak a word. Um, I, I couldn't have a fluent conversation with someone in Arabic. He says, yeah, I just, I, I find it very strange, very strange that you're, you're traveling these Muslim countries and you're, you're visiting these mosques um, and you're not a Muslim. I find that very strange. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, what, what else can I tell you? I'm just telling you the truth. I'm, I'm not a Muslim. I love Pakistan. I love visiting mosques. I don't speak Arabic. And that's it. There's, not, there's nothing more to it. So we move on. Um, I don't think he was completely satisfied with the answers because um, he just kept going, hmm, and, and staring at me. So I thought, right, well, there's nothing, there's nothing else I can do here apart from telling the truth. So bear in mind, I was in this interview for two hours, so there was so many more, so many more questions that he asked me. He then asked me if any of my parents had ties to Turkey or if they were Turkish. Now, my parents travel or they go on holiday to Turkey a lot. And I was just wondering, maybe maybe they've got that on system. I'm not sure. You hear stories that before you arrive there, they know everything about you. Um, so some of these some of these questions were, were very strange. So after two hours, I was told to go outside. And he did say to me, he says, be patient. It's going to take a while. So I went outside and I sat there and an hour had passed. And I was thinking, right, come on. And he came back out and he says, you're going to have to be patient. It's going to take a while. So I sat there and I thought, right. I got speaking to one of the airport staff and they told me that if I'm accepted into the country, they won't stamp my passport. If they reject me, then they will stamp my passport and they'll put two red lines through it. And I thought, that's going to cause so much problems. So I'm sitting there and a while's passed and truthfully someone came out and gave me a bottle of water and they gave me a sandwich which I was delighted with because it had been hours um, so they weren't bad to me, they didn't treat me bad but the line of questioning I thought was very strange particularly around the Muslim situation in Islam 
do you want to become Muslim? Do you speak Arabic? Why are you going to these mosques? I found that very strange. And I do think, having said that I'm not a Muslim, that made the interview probably a little bit better. I'm not going to say, I can't say for sure that if you go there and you say, yes, I'm a Muslim and I follow Islam, it's going to be more difficult for you. But looking at it, I would say it probably will be a lot more difficult if you if you are a Muslim um, and you do you do say that to them. So I was expecting some questions in the airport, for sure, just like any other airport, but I just didn't expect those line of questions about Islam and visiting mosques and going to Muslim countries. I just didn't, I didn't expect that. I didn't think they'd be so forthcoming with uh, and direct with, with questions like that. I didn't think that my religion or why I visit mosques was important. Like I say, I do believe that any airport staff should have the right to, to question me if they deem me a security risk. It was just the line of questioning about Muslims and Islam and mosques that I thought was was rather strange. So hopefully this has answered your questions on what it's like to travel there with uh, Pakistan stamps on your passport. Um, and he did say to me also, um, he did say to me the big one of the big red flags was the Pakistan stamp. And he told me that straight up. So if you're going to, or you just came from Pakistan and you're going there, or you have a Pakistan stamp in your passport, be prepared to get questioned. And if you are Muslim and you've got a Pakistan stamp in your passport, then I would probably say you're going to get it worse than me. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully this answers your questions. I've met some amazing people uh, in Tel Aviv, Jaffa, uh, Christians, Jews, Muslims, I met many amazing people. I just thought I would make this video to, to be honest and tell you exactly what happened to me at the airport and hopefully it can help prepare some people um, who are going there in the future. I also just want to say thank you. We've now smashed 10,000 people on here, which is mind-blowing. 10,000 was my target, so now I'm pushing for more. I do highly appreciate everybody that takes time to watch the videos and like and subscribe so thank you guys i do appreciate it this journey will continue and i'll see you in a couple of days